It's not easy to calculate the amount of dialogue that there is in a game like Animal Crossing New Horizons. I'd say that, in a metaphorical sense, dialogue is to a game what bones are to a human, but at least we can count how many of those that we have. I came across this page a while ago that contains seemingly every piece of dialogue and text that you'll find in New Horizons. Simple enough at first, but expanding the categories reveals new categories, which reveals another category, which reveals another category, which accounts for every single situation under every circumstance that can happen in a game where the possibilities and control is completely up to you. Which is to say that there is a lot that needs to be accounted for when it comes to writing the dialogue for Animal Crossing New Horizons. That dialogue of which has been the subject of scrutiny for many players. If you've played the game, you have, no doubt, run into the same dialogue multiple times, sometimes within just seconds of hearing it previously, which really would convince somebody who doesn't know any better that there was a lack of effort put in from the writing team. But taking a look through this website would prove otherwise. The reality is, is that there's so much more than just typing out words that are in tune with a villager's personality. When you talk to villagers in Animal Crossing, they're expressive, to an extent that is not matched by many other games. A lot of games attempt to express emotion from NPCs through the words that are said. Sometimes they'll feature dynamic portraits that'll convey the emotion visually to the player. Usually this will happen once, the dialogue will change, and that's that. But that, in itself, helps the player better understand the feeling behind what is being said. In Animal Crossing, there's animated, physical reactions in most every line of dialogue that is said. These are seen in the data mine dialogue as emote blank. Whatever reaction best fits what has just been said is meticulously placed in every line of script that is written, often multiple times in the same speech bubble. And when you account for how many times that is done, an argument could be made for Animal Crossing having the most expressive and well-rounded NPCs. And it's not just their reactions to stuff either. Brief pauses in the conversation emphasize what's being said. Small blurbs in a tiny font convey something said under the villager's breath. Text colors are used to highlight important details such as items and other NPCs. And the funny part is, is that I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. You've seen all these little details for yourself. You maybe just took it for granted when it's the 100th thing that you've read in-game that day. Nobody, not even the people who write all this text, would blame you for buzzing through it and not appreciating the work that goes into making it. In many ways, the job of those who write dialogue for this game is often a thankless one. Context is the interrelated conditions in which something exists or occurs. Context is another factor that writers need to account for. What is happening right now needs a quip that accounts for the relevant situation. And in a game where the environment lends itself to many different situations and circumstances, there is a lot to account for. One example being whether it's the first time you've talked to a villager that day. Villagers will say hello in a way that suits their personality, a line of dialogue you'll only see once per day from a villager. Other factors are taken into account as well, that being the time of day that you're currently talking to them for the first time, morning or night, the weather that's currently happening right now, rain or snow. You've undoubtedly noticed that villagers will have relevant dialogue when inside a location. They'll make specific comments about being inside the shop or inside the tailors. Specific dialogue for not only the museum, but for the exhibit that they're currently standing in. You've likely seen when they have a reaction to your wasp-ridden face, but they'll even react when you're being chased by wasps as well. It might not surprise you to know that villagers will comment on certain holidays, but even rare phenomena like the Aurora Borealis and Double Rainbows will warrant comments too. While not spoken dialogue, villagers are dynamic in their responses to your letters. A well-written letter will warrant a positive response, but a blank letter will leave them wondering what exactly it is you meant. When attaching a present, that is acknowledged as well. Villagers are conscious of the contents too. Sending clothing will warrant a specific response, as well as furniture receiving a relevant reply as well. This is also true for food, flowers, trees, bells, expensive items, wall items, and fossils. Sending multiple letters will get you one letter back in response, thanking you for the barrage of letters and gifts. 
Their greetings and their closings are all pulled from a long list of written options also pertaining to both what you sent and their personality. For that matter, everything that I've mentioned must essentially be done eight times over, once for every personality in the game, and all these things don't just have one response. Oftentimes, there's two or three lines of dialogue that are used for the same situation, meaning every niche circumstance that requires dialogue written for it needs to be done several times over. This is done, of course, to reduce redundancy. Seeing the same thing written twice or more over is a small reminder to the player that this is indeed a game. And that's what a lot of the complaints regarding the dialogue of Animal Crossing boil down to. With how much work went into covering every extenuating circumstance, the game seemingly neglected what I would like to call general dialogue. You might be thinking that this video is a defense for this game's writing, and it is to an extent. I do want to offer some perspective on how much work went into the small details of what makes this game so lively. I'd like to think that a writer for this game can feel a sort of vindication for acknowledging how much work it must have taken, but it would be hard for me to deny that fans of the game have a point when they claim that it's one of the weakest elements of the game. When I say general dialogue, what I mean is more specifically the interactions that you have with your villagers and NPCs that make up a majority of the interactions that you have with them. It's a sunny afternoon, there's no event or holiday going on, and you're just doing your rounds around your island, talking to every villager as you come across them. This will likely make up a majority of your interactions with this villager, and it's here where you'll see the repetition start, likely within the first few interactions. Especially so if you have multiple of the same type of villager on your island, something that's impossible to avoid with more than 8 villagers. For every wild and unthinkable circumstance that was covered with dialogue that will rarely ever be seen, it seems to me that there is a lack of depth in the dialogue that most of us will see most often. This, though, isn't my biggest criticism of this game's writing. The issue is most prevalent in the early part of the game when all your villagers are new and unfamiliar. Villagers change the way that they interact with you depending on your friendship with them, similar to real life. There's a hidden friendship value that you have with every villager. Katrina's fortunes will give you a reading vaguely revealing what your friendship level with that particular villager is, but you'll usually have a good understanding of it without it. Because when you're good friends with a villager, you'll find the dialogue more expansive. Just as you wouldn't confide your deepest secrets to a stranger that you just met, villagers will often make small talk until they're more familiar with you. So while the repetitiveness isn't my biggest complaint, it definitely is a point of frustration with some, and understandably so. My bigger issue with the game's writing is largely due to the fact that I've been playing the series for so many years. Just as our favorite TV shows become more watered down the longer that they go on, Animal Crossing has taken a similar path. This is a line of dialogue from Animal Crossing for the GameCube, which came out over 20 years ago. Back then, there were only six personality types as opposed to the eight we currently have. So I'll ask you, what personality type does this line come from? Believe it or not, lazy villagers weren't entirely incapable of talking about bugs all the time. Villagers in older games said things that genuinely took you off guard. A lot of the examples I can find online of dialogue from older games is really just them being rude. I'm not here to tell you that being called a selfish old hog makes the game instantly better, but to say that the juxtaposition of a cute villager calling you something so off the wall is not fun, then perhaps you just had to be there. Animal Crossing New Horizons outsold the next best-selling game, New Leaf, by a matter of more than three. Which is to say that many people have never experienced an Animal Crossing game where the villagers aren't terribly dumbed down. When you look up examples of dialogue that people are nostalgic for, most results feature the first few games of the series. Animal Crossing, Wild World, and City Folk. Meaning that, to many, the series hasn't featured interesting dialogue since 2008. Flanderized is a word that I'll use going forward, named after a similar transition that happened to Ned Flanders in The Simpsons. He went from a dynamic, well-meaning Christian neighbor who, if prompted, could still be pushed to the point of frustration. As his characteristics were bastardized for the sake of humor, simplicity, he became more of a one-dimensional character who, when you saw him on screen, mostly knew what you were going to get. And there's undeniable parallels between him and Animal Crossing villagers. I find that there's been a trend of either flanderizing the personality of those villagers or losing their meaning entirely. Lazy villagers went from naive and whimsical to obsessed with bugs and just plain stupid. 
Jock villagers have become fully flanderized to only talking about exercise, while cranky villagers are less so cranky and really are better described as old. To be cranky would imply that you have a breaking point, that you can be pushed beyond your limits. While GameCube cranky villagers would chew you out for looking at them wrong, New Horizons cranky villagers seem to just be missing that backbone that made us love them so much. Same with snooty villagers, who are less charmingly arrogant in favor of being like any other old lady. Normal villagers are excessively sweet at the cost of nothing. Their kindness isn't a reward for your kindness, rather just an expectation. Peppy villagers weren't one to shy away in sharing their thoughts about you. You could probably find small examples to dispute these sentiments within the game, but it is largely true that these personalities have been dumbed down to what they originally were. After all, the criticisms of Animal Crossing's dialogue lately haven't been unpopular ones. I withhold sisterly and smug villagers from criticism, as they've never been featured in a game before New Leaf, which is what many consider the golden age of the series' writing. Flanderization extends beyond just villagers as well. I could go on about many examples of how special NPCs used to have depth and backstory, but that's been a topic that's already been covered ad nauseum. What's more egregious, in my opinion, is how many characters that we love that have been reduced to just visitors. We grew attached to Gracie's unending pursuit of fashion perfection at the cost of so many of our hard-earned bells. We were charmed by the opposing natures of the ever-vigilant copper and the bumbling booker. We were invested in the love triangle between the pelicans Pete, Phyllis, and Pelly, and the list goes on. If these were the sacrifices that needed to be made to streamline the existence of a game where you can make the world any way that you want, then many would argue that it might not have been worth it. There certainly wasn't a lack of effort in the making of this game's skeletal structure. It's an easy criticism to make that there wasn't as much care put into the dialogue of Animal Crossing New Horizons, but it really is far from the truth. I personally feel the criticism is more warranted towards the direction of the game. An emphasis was obviously put on making you, the player, feel like you're in control. You're the creator of your world. You get to decide what goes where, and who you allow to grace your island. In games where this wasn't the case, we found ourselves instead enjoying many of the simpler things, of which the relationships that we made with our animal friends being one of the biggest things. The old heads among us still find ourselves sometimes missing the charm of repeatedly bugging our villagers to get them to say interesting things. When the ability to create our island the way that we like becomes too overwhelming, or was never our thing at all, we turn to what we knew best. And that is, unfortunately, something that seems to have fallen by the wayside. The sad part is, is these things don't have to be mutually exclusive. There's no reason the next Animal Crossing game shouldn't be able to cater to the creative types and the old-fashioned people such as myself. People will often say that one of the reasons why the game's charm and edge has been lost is due to the general trend of a lot of our favorite media being watered down over time. TV shows and games becoming more inoffensive in an effort to become more accommodating to either a younger or more sensitive audience. While this certainly restricts what can be said, it also doesn't mean that good writing can't still exist. Plenty of examples of games exist to prove that point, although admittedly Animal Crossing is a whole different beast. It's not trying to tell an overarching story, it's making casual conversation. It's not trying to make you feel anything, it's not about anything at all. So much care is put into the delivery, the purpose, and the context of what's being said, when sometimes all you need is to make your animal friends that you're talking to feel more human.